Well, good morning. We are on Pattaya Beach. It's wonderful to be back in Thailand. And coming to Thailand for me is more than just a physical like change of location. It's a change in my mindset. It's a change that I go through emotionally. And that's what I wanted to talk about today. Why do I choose living in Asia and the various countries here in Southeast Asia over my home country in the West? What is it that made me make this drastic change to say I am gonna leave and live full time in Asia and travel back to the United States for vacations? <laughs> There's three main reasons that we're gonna talk about. The differences are gonna be in the career change that I went through, the family change that I went through, and then also the changes that the US has gone through. We're gonna talk about those today. And I definitely encourage feedback from you in the comment section. We got a lot to talk about. We're gonna grab a bite to eat later on too. Okay, let's go. Staying ahead of changes in my career, family, and politics is why I left. One of the biggest changes that I went through over the last couple of years has been in my career. You see, I went from the military to working in IT, and I always kept up all my certifications, kept up what I was doing, and always loved to study what the latest technology was. Well, I can tell you, things are changing very fast in that career. In fact, there are new technologies coming down the line that are decimating and going to continue to decimate the IT career space. I worked in networking and server administration, and I really enjoyed it. Cybersecurity, I enjoyed that as well. And all of these fields, are being basically performed at a greater level by artificial intelligence. And that is not gonna stop. We are just in the first couple of years of these new software platforms being deployed. And as they are deployed, they are taking thousands and thousands of jobs. I still like to keep up my uh, technology certifications. Um, I find that to be interesting, you know, Thank goodness when you work in a field that you love, right? Because then when you study it, you know, it's something that you enjoy learning about. But I do that only as an emergency factor if I ever had to get back into the field, like to sustain myself, to sustain in a very harsh economic situation. And this is something to think about. What happens when jobs are taken by AI? What happens in a post labor economy? What do people do? I think we're gonna have to see some kind of universal basic income for people to be able to be paid when AI takes basically the majority of work. There's no doubt that there's some types of work, especially in fields such as the trades, that will take some time to get uh, fully destroyed, you know? because it requires tremendous dexterity and understanding of the physical world. You have to be able to mount air conditioning equipment and you have to be able to repair plumbing and you have to run overhead lines for electrical. So there's some types of work that's gonna take some time before it's in any way fully destroyed by AI. But in the intellectual fields, the fields of technology, it's happening very quickly rapid onset of new AI technologies decimating those fields. And I knew that I had to make a change fast. I could continue to keep trying to stay above where the technology levels were, or I could make a change. Now, living overseas, I am able to not only sustain myself, but I make enough from my investments that I can buy some more dividend stocks every month and build my retirement. That's something I couldn't do when I lived in the West. It was too expensive. 
So by making this change, not only did I get ahead of the rapid onset of AI, but I'm still building my retirement. And that's important going forward. That's another reason why I sold everything and left the West. One of the best parts of my life has been the honor, the privilege and the hard work <laughs> of being a father. You know, being a good father to children and motivating them and also keeping them on track and abreast of what's happening in the world so that they go forward with common sense and an understanding of critical thought and understanding of how to adapt and overcome over issues that arise. These are the jobs of the father in a family, and it's not easy. It can be stressful, it can be complicated, it can be quite rewarding as well. Over the last few years, my kids have grown and they are now living on, you know, either their own or moving into college or traveling from Hawaii to the mainland. <laughs> and I'm very proud of them. I'm also excited for them. And the job of a father never changes. You're going to continue to be there for them and they will contact you. I always joke that there's that time period of, well, you know, I kind of know everything. So, uh, you know, I'm good to go for right now. So I don't really need to chat with dad about too much. That changes, okay? It changes. I know because I went through the same thing myself. Realizing that that part in my life had come to an end is another part of why I decided to make a change in my life. Why I decided to move far overseas and start a new life here in Southeast Asia. My role that I took very seriously as a father, well, it shifted into a different gear. Let's put it that way. I wasn't in high gear anymore. I downshifted into a support role, <laughs> a support role intellectually, you know, and the world is now facing a lot of, I think, men like me that are dealing with that big change in life. Our kids, you know, in my generation, especially in my generation, Generation X, a lot of our kids are now heading to college and they are moving on with their life. Again, we're very proud, but that phase is over. And that's when I decided I'm not going to just wallow around back in my home country. I'm not going to just try to figure out what am I going to do next? No, I'm going to move on and enjoy my life as well. I'm going to make the next chapter for me. And the next chapter for me was to sell everything and move to Asia and start a whole new life. And I'm glad that I did it. it wasn't easy. And yeah, it can be nerve wracking. But I'll tell you what, it's also exciting. It's exciting to break out of the usual. And at my age, to start a whole new chapter in life, that feels really good. Time to go get a nice cup of coffee and we will continue our discussion. We still have to talk about the third point as to why I left the West and made a new life living in Asia. This great little coffee shop is located centrally right in Pattaya and there are many like it. For $1.50, I get a nice hot cappuccino freshly made. I can sit and relax and it really works about this time in the day to kind of keep me going. There's still lots to do. I enjoy my exercise in the morning and these places are great. Thank you. Oh wow, look at that. 
let's talk about a sensitive subject. The subject of how politics has changed in my home country. Because this played a big role as to why I am now full-time in Southeast Asia, making a new life here. Over the last few years, things have changed radically. Things are not normal in the U.S. when it comes to politics. Things are abnormal. It's no longer a discussion of, this is what I believe, this is what you believe. Let's try to figure out how we're gonna work together on this. I give some concessions, you give some concessions. That's not what we're seeing. What we're seeing is in an economic environment, people are trying to survive. People are trying their best to maintain their home, to be able to start a family, to be able to maintain a family, to be able to make payments every month. And while that's happening, the two sides of politics are clashing in such a way that is creating instability. Instability in the cities, instability in various states, and even in the country, they're continuing to have to raise the debt level to print trillions of dollars in order to feed money out that's fake money. It's not real money, it's just debt. It's like having a giant credit card. And that's putting a band-aid on this situation saying, if I throw money at this political turmoil, it'll keep it quiet for another four years while I'm in office. That's no way to run a country long-term. And it concerns me. I do not subscribe to either one of these philosophies of politics because I believe that a few companies and a handful of very powerful people manage everything that we do. Our economics, what we are gonna get into as far as wars, uh, what we're allowed to say on the internet, what we're allowed to do on the internet, all of this is managed by a handful of people. And for that reason, I am not willing to go out and rah-rah protest, destroy my life, get arrested, get you know, get my career destroyed, get my credit destroyed, get my finances ruined, make it so I can't travel the world. I'm not willing to do that. Not for a system that I believe we already have no control over. And I'm not subscribing to either one of these political philosophies. I don't believe in them and I want nothing to do with them. One of the reasons why I left the West and why I decided to move to Southeast Asia is to get away from the political turmoil because I don't see it getting better. In fact, I see it getting worse. And what worries me the most is that I see those that are in current power are totally okay with that. They're okay with raising the level of, of angst, the level of opposition, the level of protest, even the level of violence. They're okay with seeing that go up. And I'm not, and I don't wanna be part of it. And I don't wanna be caught up in it. And I'm not gonna throw away these incredible years of my life that I've worked so hard for to go out and destroy it and be thrown into some cell somewhere. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna find a place that's at peace just like I am at peace in my heart. That's where I'm gonna find, that's where I'm gonna support, and that's where I'm going to live and enjoy myself in Southeast Asia where things are very different than the U.S. Yes, they are, and thank goodness they are. Uh, I don't subscribe to this raw, raw democracy anymore. I think it had its time. I think it worked great at one time. And now I think that it's highly overrated. And I also think that what we do in our democracy is handed to us by others and that we don't have control over it anymore. For that reason, I am no longer going to waste years of my life fighting over something that I realize I really don't have any control over. I'm going to go and enjoy my life. How about you? What are your thoughts on the matter? Are you also going to go and enjoy your life somewhere? Or are you going to stay and fight for something? And what's the end result? What do you get? Is that a world you want to live in? In this world of division and split and angst and just bizarre ideas? Not me. I will take my wealth and I will take my person where it's going to be treated with appreciation and respect and where it can grow so that I can thrive, not just survive, but thrive as the decades ahead of me roll on. Central Festival is a great place to stop in around lunchtime for me. I like to eat healthy and exercise every day. 
Staying healthy means you live a long retirement. This tuna sandwich and all the sandwiches are good. This fantastic salad bar, this is the way to go for me for lunch. The sandwiches cost me about $3 and the salad bar that I put together generally cost me about $3 as well. It's huge, the selection is incredible. One liter of diet soda, less than $1. This great salad comes up to $3. It's pretty big. Actually, that could be my lunch by itself. But man, I love these tuna sandwiches. All the sandwiches they make are great. And they cost about $3 here. They're just fantastic. I want to thank you for spending some time with me today. We talked about some serious subjects. This is going to be what this year is about. Living overseas. The change from living in my home country to moving far away. Thousands of miles. 20 hours plus of flying to a whole new part of the world. And living here not just because of the cost of living like people think. Oh, it must be the cost of living. Yes, that is definitely a factor. But there's a lot more to it than just that. And that's what we talked about today in this video. I encourage feedback from you in the comment section. I'd like to know what your thoughts are as well. Do you agree with me on my points? Have I missed some points that resonate with you? I'd like to know. We'll continue on with this discussion as the year goes and we've got a lot to see. We've got a lot of countries to go to. We've got a lot of places to visit and I would love it if you came along with me. Like and subscribe the video and let's go together. Okay, we'll talk again soon. Aloha. Oh man, look at these. <laughs> Whoa, these look good. I'm gonna have to get some of those as well. How much are these here? Banana. How much? 30 baht. 30 baht? Yeah. Okay, hold on. 20 baht. 20 baht? Yeah. Okay, I'll take, uh, I'll take the uh, 20 baht one. There you go. Thank you very much, thank you. Oh, those look great, thank you. Thank you.